The most common question I'm asked in many games is how do you make good money? Well, go grab that comfy cozy drink and let me just show you how in Fay Farm. Hey guys, welcome to Jade Mist Gaming, Jade Mist here, and welcome to another Fay Farm video where today I'm going to talk to you all about the best ways to make money in Fay Farm and how to do it quickly. Now we all know by now that mining gems is probably one of the best ways to make money in Fay Farm, but it's not the only way to make money. So let me go ahead and tell you all of the different ways starting from early game all the way into late game. So let's start with the early game. And when I mean early game, I mean pre-mine. So there are three main ways you can make money in the early game, fishing, farming, and critter collecting. But the true question is, which is the best way in the early game without wasting too much time? Let's start with fishing. Now there's two rarities of fish. You have common and you have rares. All the rares in the game are 35 florin each, whereas the commons are 20 florin each. If you decide to grill your fish using your little grill, they will be 23 florin. Now be careful with grilling because no matter the rarity of your fish, they will always be 23 florin when you grill them. So if you want to grill your commons before selling, go for it. But sometimes I tend to forget which are my commons and which are my rares just by looking at them in my inventory. So I tend to really just sell the fish as they are without grilling it. Honestly, it's only an extra three florin each, so it really doesn't make a huge difference in the bank. Now after spending three full in-game days catching fish, my average income was 600 florin. Now this could vary a lot between players. It all depends on the fish spawning, what time of day, the weather, how your skill level is. Maybe you're not too keen on fishing. Maybe you're having some issues trying to fish in or reel in the fish. So this is based off of my experience. Now, what about critters? Will they make more, less, or about the same as fish? So like fish, critters have the same rarities. You have common and rare. But the difference between critters and fish is that most critters are the source to some pretty valuable resources that you will need later on in the game such as butterflies will give you flutter dust which in turn will give you tons of options for wings quests potions and other things in the game that you will need that for frogs are going to give you frog sweat which you can be used in potions and fertilizers bees are going to give you honey which you can also use for tree propagation so bees are very important flies dragonflies ladybugs and other general critters they're going to give you bug juice which you're going to use for potions and to be able to put grass patches down for food for your animals and shell critters are going to give you shell bits which again also for grass patches and potions so as you can see all the critters have a reason in the game so selling your critters in early game is not going to make such a huge impact when it comes to these resources so you can sell your critters but the hoarder in me tends to want to hold on to those critters but let's say you don't care about hoarding critters right now and you're just looking for some extra cash in the game that's perfectly fine so i did the same experiment i did three three full in-game days catching critters and that gave me an average of 481 florin now they did very pretty much on each day because each day had a different weather pattern the time of day makes a huge difference on the spawns the spawn rates are quite different varying between day and day so day one it gave me about 440 florin day two it dropped down to 335 and day three surprisingly jumped all the way up to 668 florin so as you can see it fluctuates a lot when it comes to the critters so the average of those three again was 481 florin not too shabby again fish still are coming in first place though now let's take a look at farming I mean, it is a farming game after all, so we kind of need some farming in here, right? Now, if you want to know more about farming, I do have a video guide where it tells you an in-depth look at farming and what you can do in the game. So be sure to check out that video. We're not going to cover all the details about farming. We're just going to go over the profits of farming. Growing crops is a very important and smart thing to do when you're starting early in the game. The cheapest crop to start out with are turnips, which you can buy from Holly for five florin per seed bag. Now, if you purchase 108 seeds, it's going to cost you 540 florin. And the reason I'm saying 108 seeds is because I have a layout here where I have a grid of 36 crops per section and I have a process that I'm going through here. So every single day in the game, I have three grids of 36. You're going to go ahead and plant one grid of 36 on the first day. On the second day, plant your second grid. And then on the third day, plant your third one. 
This layout will allow you to harvest crops every single day after the first initial four days waiting for the first batch to grow. So your process is going to be harvest, cook and sell. It's that simple. Harvest, cook and sell. You're going to take your turnips in early game and put them on your grill and then you're going to turn that into roasted roots. The roasted roots is what's going to give you the money. If you harvest 36 turnips, that's going to turn into 736 florin. 100% there is no give or take on this if you do 36 turnips per day when you harvest them. Personally, farming was the most lucrative process in the pre-mine early game when it came comparing to to critters and fishing. So 736 florin guaranteed every single day for the first several days. And if you open up your garden bench, you can take your turnips and you can actually turn them into seeds so that you don't have to go buy them again from Holly. But you lose out on some of the profit. You can buy the rest of the crops and then turn them into your seasonal crops if you want to continue on that route. But when it comes to early game, I only focus on turnips at this point. I do a small patch of the other ones so that I can get the seasonal crops and then I put those seasonal crops into my garden bench and I take those and harvest them into seeds for future. Now you're going to need quite a bit of cash to upgrade your stuff in the early game such as your bag inventory, you want that extra market stall and you want to start upgrading some of your tools as you progress so you definitely want some good money in the game. Early game it's extremely important to upgrade your bag. The first two upgrades are pretty doable with 500 florin at the first one, 2500 florin for the second line and 8,000 florin for the last one. I was able to function with just the first two upgrades all in my early game. I didn't upgrade until the third one for the 8,000 until mid game, honestly. So if you don't need that one right now, that's perfectly fine. Just work on harvesting your crops, getting your critters and fishing for the time being until you're ready to upgrade your inventory. The extra stall is going to be extremely important, especially if you want to sell more products. So be sure to upgrade that stall for 2,000 florin early on in the game. Now between the inventory upgrades and your extra stall, you're going to need 13,000 florin for all of it. And that includes the final inventory space. So trust me when I tell you, you're going to need the cash in the pretty early game for all of these upgrades. Now let's move on into the mid game. You've unlocked the mines and you're ready to make some serious cash. Your next best friend is going to be the gem polisher. You can actually unlock this crafting station pretty early on in the game, so you can definitely utilize it as you're progressing the first dungeon but it's going to be even more lucrative when you finish off the entire dungeon be sure to check out my money making guide utilizing the saltwater mines i give a full explanation on how you can actually make 50,000 florin per hour and it's extremely useful so go ahead and craft that gem polisher go into the mines grab all of those gems and stick them into that gem polisher and go sell your gems asap now the next crafting station that's also going to be your best friend and to help you fill your pockets with tons of money is the artisan table. The artisan table will not be unlockable until you finish the dungeons of the saltwater mines. You have to complete the final quest at the bottom of the dungeon. This is the end of chapter three. As soon as you get that done, you're going to see in your almanac pop up all of the new recipes and this beautiful table that you can go ahead and craft. Keeping up with the same farming system that you set up in the early game, we're going to continue taking that and we're going to use that with our artisan tables so be sure to keep up with the daily harvesting of your crops and the planting of your turnips in that grid. Now this time instead of taking your turnips and turning them into roasted roots you're going to take your turnips and use the food prep table. So your artisan table and the food prep table are going to go hand in hand. The food prep table actually was able to be crafted way before the artisan table. So you may already have that. So you're going to want both of them side by side. So take your turnips and put them onto your table and create diced roots. The dice roots then are going to be used in your artisan table and you're going to turn your diced roots into pickled roots pickled roots and all the pickled items in the game are where the money is as a second amazing source of income compared to the gems that you polish. 
the 36 turnips that you have already for daily harvesting will turn into 72 diced roots. It takes 25 diced roots to turn into one pickled root jar. One pickled root jar goes for 300 florin and you're able to make two of these per day with all the amount of turnips that you are going to harvest which gives you 700 florin. The biggest difference is that you can leave your pickled roots crafting for quite a while while you work on other things and it's not going to take up a million slots in your market stalls so while your pickled roots are currently cooking and prepping you can go to the mines you can polish your gems you can go fishing you can go do tons of other stuff and use that in conjunction with all of the other money makers you did in the early game now on top of pickled roots you can also make other pickled items like i mentioned before such as berries fresh greens you're going to have your veggies and your fruit preserves so as you're going around your entire Entire world be sure to collect all the berries in the bushes collect all of your greens all the wild greens on the floor during each season and turn them into fresh greens harvest vegetables if you've been growing vegetables like cauliflower your beans make sure you go ahead and harvest those you can turn that into pickled veggies and fruit preserves you're gonna get from your trees be sure to go ahead and create some fruit trees you can also check out the bees guide video that I created that tells you all about seasonal trees how to get all the fruit trees the fruit preserves are 390 florin each which are even more expensive than pickled roots so i highly recommend unlocking those fruit trees as soon as possible you can go to willow and get the base trees and just go ahead and start with those for now without having to breed out the seasonal ones those work perfectly fine for fruit preserves you can also turn honey into beeswax as i mentioned in my bees video and make some pretty decent money with that now all throughout mid to late game you can combine all of these money making methods to fully optimize your farm and give you the most bang for your buck continuing into the late game you can add in other smaller tasks to make money such as creating silk wool cotton fabric and then sell those once you don't really need them i do highly recommend you unlock all the clothing that you want before you start selling these and you go through all the festivals that you need because you will need tons of silk and wool and cotton for all of that but i'm talking about late game when you've basically unlocked everything you can. So rather than just let your animals roam around and not collect their resources, you can still use their resources to make you a little bit of cash if you still need some cash. Cotton fabric will make you 55 florin each. Wool fabric will give you 133 florin each. And silk will give you the most at 165 florin each. It's not a huge money maker, but it's still a little bit of extra cash. And once again, gives you a reason to keep your animals around. Be sure to check out my latest animal guide for more details on all Fay Farm animals and how to breed out all the different colors. In addition to polished gems, you can also continue collecting other resources in the mines to sell such as copper, iron, silver, and other minerals. You can sell their ingot forms and still rack in some pretty decent cash. So you can go do your gems and you can do your ingots. The most lucrative ingot is the gold ingots. So if you are over in the third dungeon and you're just collecting tons of gold, turn them into ingots and sell them for some extra cash. Four 150 florin each the second one i don't even know how to say this word or chalcum <laughs> i'll leave it here on the screen that one gives you 350 florin the feyrite ingots give you 200 the silver gives you 250 the iron gives you 165 and the copper gives you 130 and that's it guys while there are still tons of ways you can make money in this game these i have found to be the best ways to make money and to make money pretty quickly all from early game to mid game even into late game to keep you busy into the game now if you're still looking for things to do in the game because you've done everything there is to do stay tuned y'all because i have a massive project that i'm working on with the community here so stay tuned be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you can get notified of that new announcement coming very soon join over on my discord to continue all of the fey farm chit chats if you need help be sure to come on over 
post all of your photos of your farm. I love taking a look at them and I would love to feature them in future videos. So be sure you head on over there. If you're interested in playing a little bit of Fae Farm with me during streams, I do have multiplayer streams sometimes where I allow members to come and join with me. So Playful Pandas and Up, you're more than welcome to join me when we have multiplayer streams. Be sure to check out membership tiers if you're interested and join the Hall of Panda Warriors. All right, guys, until the next time, happy gaming. Bye.